My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you who may not know, the Gospel of John pivots itself around two sacraments of the church. Two sacraments that John believes draws us more deeply into the life of God. And those sacraments by which John places his entire gospel or centers them around are the baptism and the Holy Eucharist. See, for John, John believed that Christ came into the world to manifest, and not only manifest God's presence among us, but to essentially draw you and I into a deeper relationship with this God. That Christ, the Word, became flesh to draw you and I into a profound intimacy with this God. And through the waters of baptism, John sees us drawn into that very body of Christ, and then led ultimately to the table from which we may eat of the body of Christ. Now to you and I, this may seem like strange language. And in fact, it's given some difficulty over the centuries. Because Christians have long debated, as the apostles do in the story, they all say, well, how is it that you can give us of your flesh? How is it that we can drink of your blood? And for centuries, we debated it just like those disciples who heard this the first time. You know, is the Eucharist a real presence of Christ? Is the Eucharist a symbol? And so forth. But in doing so, we miss the point that Jesus is trying to make here. God is sacrificing God's self for us. God is giving of God's self for us. And this was a rather profound idea at the time of John's writing of this gospel and at the time of Jesus' ministry. Because if you look at most Greek and Roman mythology, and even some of the mythology of other lands at the time, gods did not give themselves to the people. Rather, gods demanded sacrifices from the people instead. But this God has such a profound love, the God of Jesus Christ, the God that you and I get to know in the breaking of the word and in the communion of the bread, this God has such a profound love for you and I that this God decides to give of himself to us. That this God knows the very deep longings of the human heart for something more, that we crave and yearn to be fed, nurtured, loved, and cared for. And so Jesus gathers his disciples around and says, look, I give you of myself for your life and for the life of this world. I give of myself to you that you may eat and drink and be nourished and satisfied. St. Paul continues this theme in his lesson. St. Paul and later Christian writers will say, if our God is a God who gives of himself to us for nourishment, for food, and for life, then we too must give of ourselves to others for life. Because in baptism and in Eucharist, you and I become the thing that we receive. You know that old saying, you are what you eat? How many of you have heard that phrase? It's actually, funny enough, it's actually an ancient Christian phrase. It came from Irenaeus of Lyon, one of the ancient church fathers. In one of his lines, he said, You are what you eat. If you eat of the body and drink of the blood of Christ, you become Christ as well. 
And so St. Paul is very aware of this, and as our early Christian writers, they're very aware that you and I who are drawn into the life of God through baptism and fed and nourished here at the table, as we enjoy the gift of God given for us, so too we then become gift to others. And the point behind all this is that we believe that this encounter with this living God satisfies and fulfills the longings of the human heart. If you really want to be fed, eat. Go to the table of the Lord. Nourish yourself on the word and on sacrament. And Paul says, look, you can try all the things in the world. You can drink as much as you like. You're still going to wake up with a headache in the morning. We've all been there. (laughs) We're good Anglicans, or some of us are. (laughs) You may try to party. You may try to travel. You may try to gain wealth for yourself. But ultimately, you're not going to be satisfied. You're always going to be craving more. Because these things cannot possibly satisfy the longing of the human heart. If you and I are formed in the image and likeness of God, then it is only God who can actually nourish and satisfy us. And John, John, excuse me, John says, turn to the Lord. Feast upon the Lord. Eat his bread. Drink his blood. Be fed and nourished by the one who formed and fashioned us. And as you do, give yourselves to others in love. Not just a love that's basically interested in your own gain. See, this is a distinction here. The love that the scriptures speak of is not the love that you and I often think of. Because in our world, love is very much about what do I get out of it. It's very much about my interest, my wants and desires being fulfilled. But Paul says, no, the love of God is quite contrary. It is a love that seeks not its own gain, but rather the benefit of the other. And that if Christ gives himself to us as gift in the Eucharist, then we too become gift to others. And we give of ourselves to others as gift as well. And as we do, we begin to create this community, a community quite different, a community where we begin to embody the very God that we partake of. And God manifests God's self in our midst. I sometimes wonder, and I'll finish with this, I sometimes wonder if the reason why Christianity struggles today is because we become too consumed with ourselves. We want to preserve our cultures. We want to preserve our buildings. We want to preserve our hierarchies. Have we forgotten to give ourselves as gift? We all come so interested in preserving the cultures that we have. Have we forgotten that we are to give of ourselves to others as gift? Have we forgotten to turn to the Lord and to eat and partake of the body and blood so that we may become flesh for the life of the world? And do we live in complete love and charity for others in a way that builds others up rather than tears them down. And this is the invitation that John and Paul are both giving to us today. Eat. If you want to find life, if you want to be nourished, turn to the Lord. And not just in Eucharist. Each and every day, make time in which you turn to the Lord. And in so doing, form your fashion, yourself, your life, into the way of Christ. 
And that is, give yourself in love to others in turn. Amen.